Welcome back to Modular Wild. I am Raul. This time we're going to look a little bit further with the ADC pattern sequencer here. Um, hopefully you watched the previous video that we did on basic programming with the Phonotronic MH11 pattern sequencer. Uh, this time we're going to take it uh, to the next level and kind of experiment a little bit with the uh, feature that makes this sequencer unique, uh, the ADC in ADC pattern sequencer. Um, if you were with us in the profile video, I sort of discussed what that does, but I'll kind of do just a brief uh, intro to that. So the analog to digital converter that's in here is activated whenever you switch one of these steps into the position that's labeled ADC. Um, at that point, that specific gate from there is sent to the analog to digital converter and it gets converted into an 8-bit pattern. Um, that you can see the status of over in the pattern uh, LED array over here on the left. Um, you can also manipulate it manually, which we're going to do in a little bit, with this dial and I think with this dial as well. Um, and then you can also voltage control its behavior. But first, let's get kind of a base patch going. I already have some stuff patched up to kind of save us some time. And uh, that way you can hear what it is that we're going to be changing. So what I have going right now is I have a clock from our Dixie over here going into here to move it step by step through the eight steps. And then from there, I have a CV out from here going into a quantizer. So that way it's going to play only certain notes. CV out from there going over to the Z3000 right there, one volt per octave. And you can see the notes are changing over here. And then I have two waveforms here patched out and into two separate VCAs. Uh, if we double back a little bit, what I'm going to be doing is taking the trigger out from here on the MH11. And I'm going to be triggering this envelope that's kind of in the middle. And I'm going to use that to shape our VCA sounds. So let me just get a cable. And we'll hear what our standard sound sounds like. Patching in, and then patching into the input of our envelope. So that's our standard sound right now. Just a little melody, nothing special. Okay, now let's go in and start adding some of these steps to the analog to digital converter. So what I'll do first is just the even one. So I'll do step two, step four, step six, and step eight. Okay, so now some of them are feeding into the ADC. And now let's go ahead and start manipulating this a little bit. So I can just go right here and then sort of dial this a little bit to the left if I want to. And you can kind of hear right there how the pattern has changed already. Now if I want to change it a little bit more, I can just move this over. And you can see the LEDs are changing to reflect the new pattern as well. Move it again. sort of very subtle with these changes because again if you remember back to the profile video you have up to 256 different combinations of your pattern right here and this is a really good idea to kind of keep uh, to kind of keep your original melodic idea but then just vary certain steps I've enjoyed this feature very much. Just kind of adds a little bit of creativity and nice little adjustments to your melody. Let's listen to that one right there. Let's speed up our tempo a little bit. And then do some adjusting going this way. Okay, 
Okay, so that's one flavor of pattern. Let's try different steps. So I'm gonna flip them all back to on. Now let's just do the odd step. So we'll do step one, step three, step five, and step seven. And then kind of just make some adjustments here. Okay, so you kind of get the idea as to what's actually happening here. You're able to manipulate sort of the arrangement of the pattern being on and off uh, with the style over here. And actually these two like to sort of change the pattern up a little bit. But what if you wanted to use some voltage control? Because we do have the pattern control voltage input over here that we can use for that, as we were talking about in the profile video. So let's get something patched into there. So what I'm going to do for that is, uh, if you can see over here at my uh, LFO that I have running, see, sorry about the camera there, um, I'm going to take the second copy of the clock that I have here, and I'm going to feed it up into another section of my modular, and I'm going to trigger the trigger riot up here. And I'm going to actually just use the trigger riot for the moment as a clock divider. So you can see this kind of periodically firing a trigger right here. I'm going to use that trigger, but I'm going to use it to fire a sample and hold. So I'm going to take an output from there, patch it into the trigger end of the sample and hold. And now I need something to sort of patch into the sampling part of the sample and hold. So what I'd like to use is some noise. So if I go up to a couple modules down from the trigger riot, I have this band pass out right here that actually outputs uh, noise. So I'm going to use some of this noise and sample that. Patch it right into there. And we should see some activity at the lights. Let me make sure everything's patched in there correctly. Yeah, and you can see some activity at the lights. The sample and hold right there. Move that out of your way. So that's firing off different notes or control voltages. So we're going to take those control voltages, patch them into the pattern control voltage input. And now we get a little bit of a change in our pattern. Now if I wanted to speed the rate up of that, I could of course adjust the rate of this guy right here. I'm not going to do that right now, but I'm going to keep it right there because we're at a nice, comfortable pace. Um, but I could also bring this up a little bit. Now, when I'm doing this, what I want to do is just keep an eye on the lights down here because this is going to allow me to get my uh, pattern control voltage in the optimum range. Um, there's one LED that's labeled less than zero volts and another one that's labeled greater than five volts. So you want to make sure that uh, neither one of those are firing that way. You can get it in that optimum range. There we go. And so now we've kind of automated that process. Now if I wanted to add a little bit more variety to it, you know, as I said, I could speed it up. Just do a little bit of this, maybe. Or I could start, you know, adding more steps into the ADC. Or change it up a little bit, just on the fly. kind of vary it up a little bit. And in a 
nutshell, there it is. You have the pattern control voltage patched in, and it's allowing you to automate your pattern at fixed intervals. Um, it does recommend, I think it's on the website or on the in the manual from the website, uh, that a sample and hold is probably a, a good source to use. Uh, so usually, once you get the right sort of level and you find your happy little optimum range, uh, you can get some fairly interesting results occurring with your ADC pattern sequencer. So hopefully you'll stay tuned for another example with the Phonotronic MH11 ADC pattern sequencer. Um, in the next one, what I hope to do is maybe give an example of how you can use this to process audio as well. So hopefully you found this useful, and we'll see you next time.